morning everybody this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College I want to do another uh, video in my series on the um, dispensationalism this time we're going to be talking about the new covenant and I'm going to read a number of passages to you Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 31 to 34 behold the days come saith the Lord that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Now there can be absolutely no doubt. He's not talking to Christians here. He's talking to the house of Israel. And the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant. That I made with their fathers. In the day that I took them by the hand. To bring them out of the land of Egypt. Which my covenant they break. Although I was a husband unto them. saith the Lord. And this is the covenant. That I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their minds. I will be their God and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbours and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall know me from the least of them to the greatest, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and will remember their sin no more. Now this is a covenant of God with the two houses of Israel. It's a covenant with God and the two houses of Israel. It's not going to be like the covenant he made with them when he took them out of the land of Egypt. Not going to be like that at all. It's going to be a covenant of law in which the Lord is not written on tablets of stone, but written upon the inner parts of of the heart of man he will be their god and they shall be his people and in that day no man will teach another neighbor or his brother saying know the lord there will be no need for any rabbis there'll be no need for any teachers no bible teachers will be needed for this covenant because the lord will put his word in their hearts his law he will put in their hearts and everyone shall know me he says from the least unto the greatest and i will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more now let's read a few more verses in isaiah chapter 55 verse 3 it says incline your ear and come near unto me here and your soul shall live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. So this is a covenant that will last forever. Now Jeremiah 32 verse 40 says, I will make an everlasting covenant with them, that I will not turn away from them to do them good, and I will put my fear in their hearts, and they shall not depart from me. And in Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 60, he says, Nevertheless, I will establish my covenant with thee in the days of thy youth, and I will establish thee an everlasting covenant. And in chapter 34, verse 25, it says, And I will make for them a covenant of peace, and will cause the evil beast to come out of the land, and they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. And I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing. And I will cause the shower to come down in his season. And there will be showers of blessing. And the fruit of the field shall yield her fruit. The tree of the field shall yield her fruit. And the earth shall yield her increase. And they shall be safe in the land. And shall know that I am the Lord. When I have broken the bands of their yoke. And deliver them out of the hands of all those that serve themselves of them. And they shall no more be a prey to the heathen. Neither shall the beast of the, of the land devour them. For they shall dwell safely and none shall make them afraid. And I will raise up unto them a plant of renown. And they shall be no more consumed with hunger in the land. Neither shall bear the shame of the heathen any more. Thus shall they know that I the Lord am I'm with them, and that they, even the house of Israel, are my people, saith the Lord. Ye are my flock, and the flock of my pasture, amen, and I am your God, saith the Lord. 
the chapter 37 verse 26 says moreover i make a covenant of peace for them and it shall be an everlasting covenant and i will be I will place them and multiply them and set my sanctuary in the midst of them for evermore. My tabernacle also shall be with them, yea, I will be their God, and they shall be my people, and the heathen shall know that I that I the Lord do sanctify Israel, when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them for evermore. Now in Romans chapter eleven, verse twenty six it says, And so all Israel shall be saved. For it is written, There shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. In Hebrews chapter 11, sorry, chapter 8, verse 8 to 13, he says, For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, and with the house of Judah. And he repeats exactly the same thing that Jeremiah says. And at the very end he says, In that he saith a new covenant, he, may, he has made f the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. Now the old covenant hasn't vanished away yet because when the writer to the Hebrews was writing, it has still not vanished away. But it was getting old and it was getting ready to vanish away. There are eight provisions of the new covenant. Let's talk about them. First of all, there is an unconditional covenant between God and both houses of Israel, Judah and Israel. It will be distinct from the Mosaic covenant, quite unlike the Mosaic covenant in many ways. It will be a salvation to Israel. It will be a regeneration. The children of Israel will be born again. They will be resurrected from the dead, uh, those that have died, and those that are alive will have a spiritual transformation whereby they come into uh, an immortality of life. It's immortal life. They will come into eternal life. And eternal life, of course, is the new birth. It will be universal to all Jews. All Jews will enter in. This will not there will not be an exception to this. Some may say, well, how is it that all Jews will come into the new covenant when the um when some of Jews are wicked? Well, that's because the wicked will be taken out of the way. There will be a judgment of Israel and uh, the wheat and the, the tares, you remember. And the, the, the tears will be taken away by angelic beings. And the only people left will be the wheat. The only people left will be the righteous. It will include forgiveness of sins. That's Jeremiah 31 verse 34. I had a man recently speak to me and say, No, no, the children of Israel understood what it was to have their sins forgiven. And I said, with all due respect, they didn't have their sins forgiven. They had their sins covered. OK, that's not removal. That's just covered. But this occasion, they will have their sins forgiven altogether. Their sins and iniquities, saith the Lord, I will remember no more. Now, some say that they will have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. I'm not sure about that. I think that it, the, it, the word indwelling would be wrong. They will have the anointing of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit will come upon them like the Holy Spirit did in Old Testament times. It's only the church believers that have the indwelling Holy Spirit. And uh, they will have all material blessings, all material blessings. We've only got to turn to Isaiah chapter 61 verse 8 and Jeremiah 32 verse 41 and Ezekiel 34 25 to 27. The the Lord Jesus spoke about this. He says, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. And people say, well, what are the, all the things? Well, it's all the things that they previously have worried about, whether they could get food and drink, whether they would have clothing or raiment, whether they would have houses, whether they would have peace in the land. These are all the things which previously they worried about. And Christ says, if you seek first the kingdom of God, all these things will be added unto you.
and they will have a new temple. You say, what verse are you going to find for that? Well, what about the book of Ezekiel? That's a big enough book. You've only got to read the book of Ezekiel from beginning to end and you will discover that Israel are going to have a new temple and they're also going to have a new priesthood and they're also going to have a new sacrificial system. They will have a place. It will be called my father's house. It will be a place of many rooms. The apostles will be there. The prophets will be there. All the righteous of Old Testament times, they'll all be there. David will sit upon his throne again. The 12 apostles will sit on 12 thrones. And there will be a wonderful kingdom which will never end. Wow. So this is the new covenant. <coughs> <coughs> Needless to say, Christians are not in the new covenant. Christians are in Christ, not in the new covenant. Well, how do we know that this, the Christians are not in this new covenant? For lots and lots of reasons. First of all, it won't be inaugurated till long, long, long after the rapture. So the church is going to be glorified before this is even commenced. Secondly, it's going to be a covenant of law. God never takes people under grace and puts them back under law. That's an inconsistency. And it will be a covenant with both houses of Israel. And it'll have a priesthood that will last for millions of years. So there we are. That's the new covenant. Quite different. Now next time we're going to think about something which is not a covenant. We're going to think about the church, the body of Christ. This wonderful institution where God in his grace saves men and women by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so that's going to have to wait till next time. Well, God bless you. We'll look forward to catching up with you later. Bye for now.